Liquidity and inducement. Let's get started. So here we can see a very typical downtrend. We can see we are making lower lows and lower highs. The most recent high, as we can see, has broken past the previous high. And once it's broken past that previous high, we can see we've had a further push down. Now what has happened here, this is quite simply a liquidity grab. And there is a few ways we can spot a potential liquidity grab before they happen. But before we look at that, we're gonna have a closer look at how this area here, or how this high behaves as and when this previous high is being taken. Now you might be asking yourself, how does the previous example differ from a break of structure? Now there's a couple of ways we can look at this, and this will involve looking at how the candles are behaving as this high is being taken. So in the first example, we can see we've got a couple of wicks that have gone past this dotted line, which represents the previous high. Now as the candles are not closed above this high, this is showing that there is no intent on price continuing further upwards. These wicks are showing that price does not want to stay above that high for a long period of time. And in turn, we can see the very next candle closes below the previous candle's low. This is what we would call an engulfing candle. Alternatively, an indication that price does want to push higher above that previous high is if we get a candle close. As we can see, this dotted line represents the previous high. And as you can see, the purple candle has closed above that high and this is the first sign of commitment that price wants to stay above there. But we are not completely out of the woods when this happens. There is a few examples where this can still turn out to be a liquidity sweep. So with that in mind, what would that look like? Now, just like the previous slide, we can see we've had our candle close above that previous high. And the very next candles after that, we've had steady bearish momentum pushing further down. And what are these three bearish candles showing us? Quite simply, this is showing us that this candle closure above here cannot be sustained and the momentum is likely going to continue pushing back further down. Now a candle close above a previous high or a previous low is a strong indication that we are going to see price following through, but it's not always a guarantee. So these are examples that we need to look out for when we do see a potential break of structure. Now in this example on the right, we can see we've had a candle closure above that previous high. We've then seen a bearish candle and the very next candle, we could then see a fair value gap. A fair value gap, so we will cover in a lot more detail in another video. But what we can see here, we have candle one here, we have candle two, we have candle three. Candle one's low and candle three's high has a gap between. Now this is where the fair value gap is. And this is showing that there's stronger momentum pushing away after taking that previous high. And price is likely going to get drawn back into this fair value gap at some point. How would this look like on the real charts? Now in this example, we can see we've had lower highs being formed and lower lows. This high has caused this low. This low has failed to break past this low, but this is not really a make or break situation in terms of this liquidity grab. This low not breaking past this low or whether it does or not, is not really the defining factor whether we're going to see a liquidity sweep or not. But essentially what we can see here is when this low has failed to break past this low, and then we've had this new high, this is then going to encourage a lot of traders to start looking for longs. And once those traders are looking for longs after we've taken this high, it's very possible that they would then be liquidated when price pushes further down. So why has price come above this high? Well, if we look over to the left, as we are creating new lower highs, we can see this leg just here, we actually have a fair value gap just here. So let's mark out this fair value gap. And here we can see price has pushed into this fair value gap. And then we've seen a strong reaction from this. The wick, the candle has failed to close above this high. And then we've had a nice strong engulfing candle after this purple candle. So this candle has broken past and closed below the previous candles low. Following on from that, we can see another impulsive push, leaving behind another fair value gap. And there we can see we've had a strong reaction from this fair value gap, creating more lower lows. So how can we avoid getting caught up in a trap like this? The one thing we wanna look out for is if we are seeing a downtrend like this, if we have one of these legs that presents a fair value gap or a POI within this leg that has not been mitigated, there's a very good chance at some point we are likely going to see price come up and tap into those areas. So we may see something like this and then a further push down, which is exactly what has happened here. Now we do have a POI, 
we haven't quite tapped into this PY and it's not a very strong point. So we have this purple candle here. But what we can see is the strong factor here is the fair value gap price has mitigated this, failed to come up to this point of interest and instead reacted from this point further than pushing price downwards. Now, another form of inducement we can look for is significant highs and lows. Now, these significant highs and lows, they could be swing highs, they could be daily highs, they could be weekly highs, monthly highs. And what we can see in this example, we have a daily high formed at this point just here. Price is pushed away, created a new low, we've had a pullback and a new lower low. We've then seen price retrace and correct back up towards the daily high, but we have failed to break past that daily high. Now a daily high is an area that is most likely going to have a liquidity sweep at some point or another. Now it doesn't have to happen immediately, but if we do see price come very close towards this daily high and push away, then it's likely reserving liquidity for later on. Now imagine this daily high is a key level that a lot of traders are looking for price to react from. We've seen that reaction, price is pushing away, and as price is pushing away, the early sellers are entering the markets in their positions, maybe around here, maybe around here, depending on their entry criteria, and then price pushes up, takes this liquidity and accelerates back to the upside, or we may just see a liquidity grab very similar to the first slide and then price pulling back, correcting in its original direction. All right, now what can we see happening here? Now here you can see we do have a daily high. This daily high is this point over here. Monday the 11th of March 2024. Feel free to have a look at this on EURUSD. But we also have another daily high in between. We have a daily high just here. Let's mark out this daily high. So this daily high has been taken. We've seen a reaction. Price has pulled back, it's corrected into this fair value gap. There's also a point of interest just here. We've then seen a mitigation of this point and price continuing pushing to the upside. Now think of this from an intraday perspective. We are looking at this daily high being taken. We could then see this high failing to break past the previous high that has taken this daily high. Because we have come so close to these two highs, this daily high and this high, we can now see there is a strong reason for a liquidity grab. This is an area where a lot of traders would be looking at to see that actually price is rejecting this area. We can see this engulfing candle pushing down, encouraging those FOMO traders, those early sellers into the markets before pushing further to the upside, grabbing this liquidity and grabbing the liquidity of the traders that were in their short positions around here, accelerating price further up. And why are these two points significant? Now, if we look a little bit further to the right, we could then see what price has then done. We could then see towards the latter part of the trading day, this is around five o'clock UK time, as you can see by the timestamp at the bottom. As the day continues and we enter the latter part of the New York session, we could then see we have entered Asia trading range. Price has then slowed down, but since this liquidity grab, there has been enough liquidity taken from the markets in order to correct price from that sweep of that daily high. We can then see the London Open has moved sideways before a news event, which has then used the liquidity from the prior day to help accelerate price back to the downside. Now you might be thinking, well, if we did have a news event around here, why was that not enough to create this push down? Well, quite simply, we are looking at two major liquidity points here that have managed to trap early sellers and early buyers into the market. Following on from that, we could then see we do have a POI here. This POI is the reason this daily high here was taken. And this POI itself has then also become liquidity. Now let's look at how that POI has behaved. We can stretch this out. We can see we have had a mitigation of this POI during the Asia session, but this is not the intent of the large players in the markets. They've created this POI by sweeping two significant highs, these daily highs prior, inducing traders into early buys. And then as you can see, this POI eventually has failed and price then continues pushing further down before consolidating before this news event. Now, all of this in turn has helped fuel this push down because we've taken liquidity from a daily high, a daily high, a POI. We've generated some sideways movement and then we've initially broken out of that range. Another form of inducement we can expect is an unmitigated POI. What we can see in this example here, we can see we've had a change of character. We've got this bullish trend. This high has broken past the previous high. So this higher high has then pushed down, breaking past the previous low 
in turn creating a change of character. Once we've had this impulsive leg, we've left behind a fair value gap. Now it doesn't have to be one, there could be multiple fair value gaps, there could even be POIs within this leg that these internal highs and lows are then reacting from. What we could then see is prices come close to this POI, we've reacted from a fair value gap, pushing down. Once we've pushed down, we may or may not break past this previous low, but because we have an unmitigated POI, there is still orders left to collect from this impulsive leg. So it's very likely at some point we are going to see a mitigation of this point before price continues back where it was intended to go. So those early sellers looking to get into the markets here, depending on where their targets were, were likely in a trade for a period of time until this point, this low, creates a new high. This high mitigates the POI and then accelerates away. Now these traders that would have been in a trade early will be then left wondering why they've either hit stop loss or break even and then price has gone in their intended direction. And quite simply, they were impatient and got into the markets far too early. And this is what it would look like on the real charts. We can see we've had this bullish leg. We've then had a period of consolidation at this peak. We can then see this high has a POI. We've seen an impulsive push to the downside with multiple fair value gaps. We could then see we've had a change of character. But after leaving multiple fair value gaps, we can see price is trying to correct itself, pulling back into these areas, reacting from them subtly, pushing back up, mitigating these fair value gaps. And as you can see, just like the previous example, we've come very close to this POI by mitigating the fair value gap just below. We've had a slight reaction from this, failing to break past this low, and then continuing back up to take the last of the orders from this leg before ultimately accelerating away, breaking past all those previous lows. With a little bit of patience and reading the narrative that the markets are showing you, we can anticipate moves like this inducement where we do not want to be in a trade. And situations like this is a main contributor for people rushing into early trades, damaging their win rate and also over trading. Once a trader will see this reaction happen into a short, only to be stopped out when price comes up to this point and then see the markets accelerate away in the intended direction they would look into trade, they will likely then start revenge trading and taking even worse trades. Now, if this sounds like you, I strongly encourage you to backtest situations like this, have a look at your previous trades and see if there was instances where you've been in the markets far too early, your trade direction was correct, but your entry was not. So if you found this video useful, please consider liking and subscribing. Feel free to share this with anyone you feel needs to see this in order to help them out. And if you're on the search for a community of like-minded traders trading a rule-based approach and are looking to be a consistent trader, feel free to hit the link in the description because at the time of recording this video, I'm currently offering 25% off access to the DRS course, the community, and also my live trading sessions. There's no obligation, you can cancel at any time. So if you're looking to be a consistent trader, hit the link in the description. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.